In roughly a billion years, Earth will grow so hot that its oceans will evaporate, and all life here will disappear. That's why humanity has already begun searching for another world to call home. Our instinct to explore has pushed us into the harshest regions of the planet. We cut paths through dense forests where no trails existed and uncovered new species while forming pockets of human life deep inside untamed wilderness. In the early 1900s, daring explorers with only basic equipment ventured into the silent kingdom of ice, Antarctica, where survival demanded extraordinary cleverness and endurance. But today, our ambitions lie far beyond Earth's remote frontiers. When we gaze at the night sky, we wonder, is there another world out there meant for us? For years, Mars seemed like the obvious next step in humanity's cosmic journey. But this dream was more fantasy than future, an optimistic projection that reality refused to support. It appeared as though no other refuge existed, until we stumbled upon Titan, a mysterious moon with surprising similarities to Earth. Its discovery reignited our hope for a second home. What would it take to build a functioning colony millions of miles from Earth? Why is Mars such a poor candidate? And are we technologically ready to send humans on a one-way mission to Titan? Hi everyone, this is Harry, and you are watching. On Earth, we have terrain we can work with, air we can breathe, liquid water, mild temperatures, and a natural shield from deadly radiation. These conditions are essential for life and almost impossible to find elsewhere. Take Mars. Geological clues reveal it once resembled early Earth, warm climate, lakes, and maybe even life. But that Mars is long gone. Today, it's nothing more than a frozen wasteland, averaging 80 degrees Fahrenheit, drenched in radiation and nearly devoid of atmosphere. Every step on its soil pushes you closer to death. Still, imagine we chose to build a settlement there. After a seven-month journey, the first astronauts would land on the Red Planet. Their initial mission? Build a habitat capable of maintaining Earth-like pressure, oxygen, and temperature. It must be large enough to live in, store equipment, and host indoor work such as farming or excavation. Scientists are identifying mineral-rich areas where the first massive structures would arise. Huge pressurized domes would act as the settlement's backbone. But these fragile shelters must also protect colonists from cosmic radiation and violent dust storms. Robotic excavators would dig up regolith, which 3D printers would transform into usable building materials. Much of the colony would expand underground, linking domes with tunnels. Yet even with these defenses, survival depends on steady supplies of water, air, and energy. Life inside won't be simple. Biologists must constantly optimize plant growth. Minor shifts in temperature, humidity, gravity, or pressure threaten entire food supplies. Meanwhile, geologists venture outside the domes to search for ice deposits. Nothing can be wasted. Water, minerals, sweat, even urine are recycled. 3D printers produce spacecraft parts and essential tools because shipments from Earth take far too long. The colony system is delicate. One malfunction could cascade into disaster. Above all, the colony needs energy. On Mars, massive dust storms block sunlight for weeks, choking off solar power. Dust blankets solar panels, requiring robots to brush them clean. But the robots also need maintenance, forcing colonists into danger. Mars's atmosphere is only about 1% as thick as Earth's, so meteoroids hit the ground regularly. With its frozen core and weak magnetic field, the surface is constantly exposed to solar and cosmic radiation. Spacesuits carry sensors that warn colonists when deadly levels spike. Mars's biggest flaw? its thin, almost non-existent atmosphere. A thicker atmosphere would solve countless problems. Elon Musk once proposed detonating nuclear weapons over Mars's poles to warm the planet by releasing trapped carbon dioxide. But the idea collapses under scrutiny. Mars simply doesn't have enough CO2 to create significant atmospheric pressure. Even if all its polar ice and mineral-bound CO2 were magically released, it wouldn't come close to the amount needed to sustain liquid water, and any water vapor produced would freeze again immediately, not to mention the radioactive fallout that would further poison the planet's surface. It's an interesting thought experiment, nothing more. Mars is appealing only because of its proximity to Earth. 
But is being close enough to justify using our greatest technologies and vast resources on a world that can never truly support us? What if a far better opportunity exists, one that aligns with our long-term survival? Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is frigid and remote, yet far more promising than Mars. The International Space Station already relies on constant resupply from Earth. A Martian colony would be the same. Titan, however, possesses abundant raw materials on its surface and below it. The challenge isn't scarcity, it's harnessing what's already there. Cassini took almost seven years to reach Saturn, but looking ahead, advances in propulsion might make a crude journey to the Saturnian system possible in around two years, perhaps within the next half century. In Titan's vast frozen plains, where temperatures plunge to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, a courageous group of pioneers envisions a new beginning. Titan lies over five times farther than Mars. This is a voyage of no return. Titan's greatest advantage is its thick atmosphere, about 50% denser than Earth's. This alone makes the idea of terraforming far more realistic. A dense atmosphere can retain heat. A modest temperature rise of just 75 degrees Fahrenheit could evaporate Titan's liquid methane, triggering large-scale changes. Methane rain would stop, ice would melt, and oceans could form. But that's a distant future. For now, the colony survives on limited supplies brought from Earth. Settlers still need heated suits and respirators, but unlike Mars, no pressurized suits are required. Titan's surface pressure feels like being 50 feet underwater. Harsh, but survivable. Try removing a pressure suit on Mars, though, and the body would swell, lungs would rupture, and bodily fluids would boil. Titan poses dangers, but nothing is instantly fatal. Titan is hostile, yet rich in resources. It's a natural hydrocarbon generator. One of its chemicals, propylene, is used on Earth to make plastics, materials we've mastered. On Titan, these hydrocarbons can form strong, lightweight components for habitats, insulation, tools, and electronics. The moon lives in perpetual twilight. Even at its brightest, sunlight filters weakly through its hazy sky, making navigation difficult. But settlers may not need protective domes immediately. Despite lacking a magnetic field, Titan spends most of its orbit inside Saturn's magnetic shield. As settlers explore Titan, the alien landscape starts to feel strangely familiar. Dunes, rivers, lakes, even seasons, though each season lasts seven Earth years. But instead of water, Titan's lakes are filled with methane and ethane. If oxygen existed there naturally, Titan would ignite like a massive fuel reserve. Fortunately, methane becomes a tool rather than a threat. Solar power is useless at Titan's distance. Sunlight there is 100 times weaker than on Earth. But methane-rich seas can generate energy, much like hydroelectric power plants on Earth. Researchers believe Titan holds enough methane to power civilization for tens of thousands of years. Titan's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, with methane and complex organic molecules forming when sunlight interacts with particles in Saturn's magnetic field. These organics are ingredients for prebiotic chemistry. Meanwhile, colonists work on oxygen production. Mixing oxygen into Titan's atmosphere won't trigger explosions. Oxygen isn't flammable on its own, and temperatures are far too low for methane to ignite. Any introduced oxygen would freeze unless carefully warmed in controlled habitats. Inside sealed modules, settlers split water into hydrogen and oxygen through electrolysis, the same method used aboard the ISS. Methane remains valuable for rocket fuel. To burn it, they need liquid oxygen, created by melting Titan's water ice. Titan contains an underground ocean. Liquid water scientists hope to explore with a submarine. Life similar to deep-sea organisms on Earth may lurk there. Once oxygen is secure, the colony begins agriculture. Titan's nitrogen-rich atmosphere mirrors Earth's, making it ideal for fertilizing crops. But light is scarce. Sunlight takes 80 minutes to arrive and is extremely faint. Giant mirrors can't help either. Titan orbits Saturn, not the Sun. So colonists consider creating artificial light using a glowing sphere of molten tungsten, a metal that stays liquid at extreme temperatures. Its surface tension would hold it in a spherical shape, providing heat and illumination. They have time to build it. One Titan day lasts about 15 Earth days. Titan is far from easy to colonize, but compared to Mars, 
it offers far more potential. And it's not the only promising moon. Europa, Enceladus, and Ganymede may also hold possibilities. If you'd like deeper dives into these worlds, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like so we know you want more. Thanks for watching.